Okay, in this tutorial we're going to look at how we can program our EV3 Mars Explorer to navigate its way through the Mars terrain, uh, the uh, simulation that we created in the classroom. Um, but I'm, for demo purposes I'm going to show how it's going to maneuver through uh, tall grass. And um, uh, what I'm going to show you here is a program that will allow the EV3 to uh, think and decide along its way. And uh, there are several programming constructs that we're going to look at here. So how can we build all of these programming constructs? Let's start off with, down here, under the green array, I'm going to get two motors and drop them in. And they click and connect with each other automatically. I'm going to set the first motor to A by clicking on the letter in the top right corner of the motor. And then I'm going to set the time. Right now it has like how many rotations or how many seconds. By clicking on this little icon here near the, the wheel, I can choose that I just want the motor on, always. So it's on infinitely. And I'm going to do the same for motor B. Come over here, set this one to B. And I'm going to click on this little parameter here and set it to on. And then next I'm going to go get my first programming construct, which is going to be the switch. That's the third block in the yellow options. And I'm going to switch it. I'm going to click on the touch sensor. I'm going to switch this to ultrasonic sensor. Choose compare distance in centimeters. There we go. And in my case, I'm going to set the threshold to about 15 centimeters. We want it approximately between 15 and 19 or 15 and 11. That's kind of a safe range. But where does the threshold break? The threshold breaks, in other words, yeah, if you're within that range, 15 plus or minus 4, we're okay. But if you drop lower than, less than 4 centimeters away from that threshold, then we want you to do what? Okay, under the true condition here, that's the check mark, we want you to do what? Okay, we want you to, we'll go back to the motors and we want to grab motor A. Let's set the D back to A. And we want you to reverse. So I'm going to move this down, I don't know, say to power 87, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to set it to, so I'm going to set it to seconds. So let me click on this little guy here for seconds. So that defines this second field here in seconds. And I'll set it, set it to one. What about if it stays within that 15 plus or minus four range? In other words, it's it's safe. It's running safely. There's no obstacles. Well, let's just grab a motor in here, set it to A, and let's set the construct to on. It will always be on. In other words, just keep moving forward. Okay, so ultrasonic sensor, if there's nothing going on that I need to be alarmed about, then you're okay. Keep moving forward. However, if we go to the check mark option, that is if the condition is true that it's dropped more than four centimeters lower than 15, then execute this command, which is to reverse motor A. That will cause the robot to turn, and as it turns, it will, it'll, it will be turning away from the wall and getting back on course. Okay, what about the front end of the robot? If the robot hits a, a wall in front of it, so I'll go back to the orange constructs, grab another switch, and in this case, I will keep it set to touch but just below the touch, I'm going to click on this parameter, the state, and I'm going to say pressed, not bumped. Again, because bump means that it, it's been pressed and released. If you're jammed up against the wall, you haven't been released, so you need pressed. If the condition is true that the bumper has been pressed, what do we do? We'll go back to our motor options here, and we're going to grab our steering option. And in this case, remember to set your ports to... A and B, and we are going to reverse the power, say by 100, and I'll keep it at w at one rotation. Okay, and there, that's fine. Okay, once you reverse for one rotation, then I want you to start turning. So I'm going to drop in here a motor B, keep it on at power 75. Drop in a second motor. That's Switch it to A, and I will have A reverse. 
but whatever, minus 90, minus 75, doesn't really matter. Here, let's switch it from rotations to seconds. And then I'll enter the amount of seconds to, let's say, 3. That may be too much. If it's too much, adjust your robot. And now I want it to jump back to the beginning where motors A and B will kick in once again. So now I'm going to add my final programming construct, which is a loop, which will keep things going on and on for eternity until you turn the robot off. So go down to your yellow programming constructs, grab the second block, sorry, the third block, which is a loop. Let's just stretch this open. Okay, I'm going to click, and while holding the first one, start clicking with my fingers on the second one and the third block, and so they all get selected at once, and then I'm going to drop them into the loop. And then, I'm going to take this loop and connect it to the start program command. And there we have it. Now, so this is a replica of the first program. The only thing I forgot to do, and these little things can become annoyances if you don't pay attention to them, is I forgot to tell it wh which sensors are connected to which ports. So over here I have my ultrasonic sensor. I'm going to switch that from port 4 to port 1 because I plugged it in to port 1 on my robot. And I'll do the same for my touch sensor that I plugged into port 2. So I don't need this first program over here anymore, so I'm just going to wipe this out, drag it off the screen. Next I'm going to turn on my EV3 and upload the program and let's see how that runs. So I've turned on my EV3 and if I now, and I connected it through uh, the uh, iPad preferences and now that it's connected, if I wanted to download it, I could click on this download button up here. And then I'd have to go to the brick, select the program, and hit the center brick to actually activate and run that program. Or if I wanted to download and run immediately, I just hit this uh, forward arrow key, and then away it goes. The ultrasonic sensor sees it gets close to the wall, it turns away. Then the forward bumper hits, reverses, turns left, and moves on forward. Uh, just one final note, and that is that everybody's robot is designed differently. The wheels have different traction, different sizes, and whatnot. So the parameters that are within here, these little values, you may have to go in and adjust them to tweak your robot and to get it to work more effectively within the Mars simulation.